Hello there. In this course, we are going to create flexible GUIs in PyQt5. And specifically, here's what we are going to make. We are going to create some GUIs that scale in the horizontal axis, some that scale on the vertical axis, some that scale in both axes. And we are also going to make some GUIs that have tabs and entire different pages. And all of this can be achieved very easily because all we need to learn about is the PyQt layout manager. And this is what we are going to focus on in this course. And this one allows us to place a widget on a GUI and to make it responsive. And this is going to be the main thing we are going to learn about. And besides that, we are going to talk about how to select specific layouts for specific purposes. And generally, we are going to talk about how to create flexible GUIs in a presentable manner. And all of this should be fairly straightforward. Although I would recommend that you already know the basics of PyQt. Now, this doesn't have to be much. The minimum you should know is how to create a window in PyQt and at least know what widgets are. Although later on for one video, we are also going to use signals and slots. Although we are only going to use it for the pages later on. And this comes quite late in this course. So you could follow most of the lessons without knowing about signals. But generally, most of the concepts are fairly simple. So if you know the basics of PyQt, this should be fairly straightforward. And I am using the latest version of PyQt 5, which at the moment is 5.15.2. And I assume that you already have PyQt installed yourself, either on the system or in a virtual environment that you know how to use. Now, if none of that made sense and you are just starting out with PyQt, check out the PyQt learning path. All of the basics are explained in detail there. You can find the link to it in the description for this lesson. And before we jump into the course, let's talk about its structure. And fundamentally, there are two major components of this course. Number one is an introduction to layout managers. So in the next video, I talk about the main problem GUIs have. And after that, for the next four videos, we talk about different layout managers. And then there are two more videos to talk about different ways to customize them a little bit further. And once we have all of that covered, there are going to be two more videos that cover more advanced layout managers. And once we have those, we are going to conclude this course and we are good to go. It should be pretty straightforward. So with all of that covered, let's jump into the course. Let me start this video by outlining the main problem of a GUI. And the main problem is that a GUI has to be flexible because you don't really have control how a user would use your app. So for example, your app might be used on a TV or on a phone, or it might be used on a really modern screen with lots of pixels or on a really old phone with very few pixels. It might also be used in the windowed mode. It might be used in full screen or it might use a very weird ratio that can also happen. Now there's also the case for different languages where some languages just have longer words than other languages and your GUI should account for all of that automatically. And you could try to implement all of this yourself. And PyQt has a couple of methods to help you with that. They are called move and resize. And those two methods would allow you to resize and to move around any widget on the screen. And then you could use resize event to check if the window is being resized. And this would be a doable solution. However, it would also be incredibly labor intensive and would require you to do a ton of extra work. But fortunately, you don't really have to do that because PyQt has lots of inbuilt tools that help you to lay out your widgets in a responsive manner. And those are called layout managers. And layout managers are actually fairly simple. All they do is that they take a specific widget and they place it in a certain way on your window. And let me give an example. I think this is going to explain it the best. One of the simplest layout managers in PyQt is called the QHbox layout. And all that this one does is that it puts all the widgets you put inside of it in a horizontal layout so that they're all next to each other. And this layout is responsive by default. So if you make the window larger or smaller, all of your widgets are going to scale along with the window. So you don't have to add any extra code. All of this happens automatically. And a very similar layout manager is called QV box layout, which lays out all of your widgets in a vertical manner. So you could make your GUI shorter or taller and all of your widgets would still be arranged in the proper manner. Another really useful layout manager is called QGrid layout. And this one is giving you a 2D space where you can lay out different widgets which is super useful if you have more complex layouts in mind. And then another one for now is called QForm layout. 
And this one effectively gives you two columns where you can place elements like they would be in a form. So you would have a label and an input field, for example. And those would be the most basic layout managers. There are a couple more that we are going to see later, but for now, let's stick with those. And once we have those covered, we are going to get more advanced layout managers. But before we get into our first example, let's first talk about how to use layout managers in theory. And there are three steps that you have to follow. Number one is you have to create the layout itself. And this one has to be stored in a variable, which is, well, pretty straightforward. The next step is you have to add widgets to the layout. So for example, if you have two buttons as a widget, you have to add those two to the layout itself, which happens with add widget. And the argument would have to be the widget you want to add. There could also be a couple more arguments in here, and we are going to cover those in just a bit. And for the final step, you have to assign the layout to the parent widget, which happens with set layout, and then you add the layout as the argument. So effectively what we are doing is we take our main window, in there we create a layout, and to this layout we are going to add widgets. And then the layout determines how the widgets are going to be laid out. And all right, with that covered, let's actually create our first example, where we are going to create a horizontally scaling GUI. Now that we have gotten the theory out of the way, let's create our very first GUI. And here's what we are going to do. We are going to use the QHbox layout manager to create a horizontally scaling GUI. And this layout manager works in a very simple way. All it really does is it takes a couple of widgets and places them next to each other, with the first widget you add being on the left and each additional widget being further to the right. And the important part for this layout manager is that it takes the entire horizontal space of the parent container and each of the children widgets inside of it is going to get an equal amount of space. At least by default, you can make some changes to this later on. And that's pretty much all we need to understand how this works. So let's jump right into our code and let's have a look at this. So here I am in my code and I already have a couple of lines that I use to create a basic PyQt application. So if I run this code, all I get is an empty window that I can't scale, but I can't really do anything else with it. Well, besides closing it. And okay, let's talk about this very briefly and then we are going to add a layout to it. We are starting by importing sys and importing the basic PyQt widgets. So queue application is what we need to run PyQt. QHbox layout is the layout manager we are going to use in just a second. And then queue push button and queue widget are the two widgets we are actually going to use with queue widget being the parent container and queue push button being the button we want to add. And then below that, we are going to create our window class that is inheriting from queue widget. And right now, this one doesn't really do anything. We have only given it a title, but nothing else. And then below that, we have an if statement that if name is equal to main, so we make sure that we are only running this code. Now, since we only have a single file, this isn't strictly necessary, but it is good practice and it doesn't really do any harm. So let's just use it. And inside of this if statement, we first create our Q application app, and then we are creating an instance of our window class. Then we are showing the window class, and then we make sure we are able to close it later on. And that is literally all we need to know for a basic PyQt application. Now, again, if you have no idea what I just talked about, check out the PyQt learning path. You can find the link to it in the description for this lesson. But okay, now let's say you want to add a layout to this. For that, you have to go to our main class. We first have to create an instance of our QHbox layout. Let me actually type this in a comment, QHbox layout instance. So what you need to do is to first create a variable. In my case, I'm calling this layout. And this one needs an instance of QHbox layout. And all you need to create an instance is the keyword QHbox layout and brackets. And what we have to do now is to add widgets to it. So add widgets to the layout, just in a comment so we know what we're doing. And all you have to do to add a widget to the layout is to get the layout variable or the instance where we stored it and then add widget. And in here, you could add essentially any kind of widget as the first argument. In my case, I want a queue push button 
And for this one, we need one argument with the name of the button. In my case, I'm going to call it left most. And this would be giving us one button. But I want to have three buttons in total. So let me duplicate this line twice. The second button I want to call center. And the third button I'm going to call rightmost. And here's an important thing about the QHbox layout. That when you add widgets to it, the first widget is always going to be added on the left. With the second widget being added to the right of that. And then each additional widget being further to the right. You're going to see in a second what I mean. So now if I run the code, we still can't see anything. And the reason for that is that this layout here is not being set as the layout for this Q widget, so our parent widget. And all we have to do for that is to set the layout on the application window. And really all we have to do for that is to get our parent widget, so self, and then set layout. And now as an argument, we pass in our layout. And now if I run this, we can see our three buttons. That worked pretty well. And we can even scale it up and down and it is still going to work in exactly the same way. So this one is working really well. And just to go over it one more time, Q widget is our parent widget. So this is the main window of our application. Inside of that, we have a layout that is a QH box layout. So this one lays out all of the widget in a horizontal way. And to that, we are going to add three different widgets. And finally, we are setting our layout to the layout of the parent widget. And with that, we have a basic horizontally scaling GUI. Now you can refine this a little bit more. When you add the widget, right now, we only added a single argument, but you could add two more arguments to this. So when you add a widget, you can add three arguments at the most, but you have to add one argument. So the first argument always has to be the widget you want to add. The second argument would be the stretch factor. And this would be how much space the widget is going to take up. And the third one is going to be the alignment. And this one would set, well, the alignment of the widget. And just to keep things simple for now, let's just focus on the stretch property. This one is really simple. So by default, all of the widgets have the same width. And that is because we didn't specify a stretch factor for each of them. But if we did, we could influence the width of each of the different widgets in quite a flexible manner. So let's check that one out. So here I am back in my code and let me add another argument to each of them. So by default, the stretch factor for all of them is zero. So if I run the code now, nothing should change and it doesn't, good to know. But now let's say I want my rightmost widget to be larger than the other two. So I change the stretch factor to, let's say two. And now if I run the code and I scale it, only the right one is going to scale up because this one has a much greater scale factor. And what I could also do is change the center one to one. And now if I run the code, both the center and the rightmost widget are going to scale. Although the center one only half as much as the rightmost button. And this is working quite well. And that way you have a lot of control over how each of the widgets is going to scale and how large it is going to be, which is really powerful. And all right, with that, we have covered our first widget. So in the next video, we are going to look at the vertical layout.